When the Nether Dimension was updated back in 2020, a discussion sprouted among the members of the Minecraft community regarding how the end should be approached when adding content to it. The 1.16 update did a great job on revamping the Nether, adding new fittingly placed content to it while keeping and improving the old one. However, when the first fan-made concepts regarding an end update began to rise within the interests of the community, many players started to realize that the end, unlike the nether, has too little to build upon, which led to mothers and other creators to project their own points of view into the matter, adding completely fresh content to the end that some people saw fitting but that a pretty much equal amount of players seemed to not agree with. It was clear at this point that the end despite being unique in its appearance, didn't have a defined identity. To worsen things even more, around that time, a member of Minecraft's gameplay design team, Ulraf, said that the part of the end's personality is to be a wasteland and that adding too much features to it will take away from its identity. As of today, two projects lead the race in what regards revamping the end, those being Better End, which pictures the end as a beautiful, lush, full-of-life alien planet which might remind to some people of Shen from the Half-Life series and Nullscape, a data pack that focuses on keeping that barren wasteland identity that the end is supposed to have, while revamping world generation with astonishing geographical formations made exclusively for the end. There are many other mods worth mentioning, but by presenting to, to you this popular two, I can easily refer to both ends of the compass in what regards the popularly accepted takes on the matter, which in the last few years has led the appearance of some sort of two bands in the Minecraft community. In this video I will put myself in harm's way in an attempt to give a definitive answer to what the real identity of the end is by presenting to you a unifying force that ties together all loose ends regarding the beloved sky dimension. I believe that the true identity of the end is not being a wasteland, nor being the sky dimension that OG players always wanted. No, I believe the end is the anti-world. We can find the first hints that point towards this hypothesis by looking at Endstone through the inverted color vision of Endermen, which they see almost like regular cobblestone or through the allergy and life presents to water, a substance essential for life, that instead of doing them any good, hurts them like acid. I believe that the end design principles don't stand over a single pillar that tells us whether it is supposed to be an alien planet, a wasteland, the sky dimension or the anti-world. But I think it just serves as the foundations for several design pillars to be built upon. I think that the end's design stands over three pillars that to this day have been used to design new content for the end, for both mods and the vanilla game, but that I think are not usually taken into account consciously and are easy to overlook. These design pillars consist on the commonly shared traits life in the end has. Firstly, verticality, the tendency and life has to grow very tall or present elements related to flight or levitation. Secondly, bipolarity, referring to the ability for end creatures to present two usually opposite states, calm and angered endermen, egg and adult dragons, open or closed shulkers, and dead or flowering chorus flowers. And third, and most obviously, transportability, the fact that creatures of the end present teleportation powers within their biology and the more overlooked fact that items regarding this dimension are related to the facilitation of transport. Bear in mind that these pillars apply to many other elements regarding the end besides its life. By analyzing these commonly shared attributes and the idea that the end is the anti-world, I created an element that unifies all living creatures, providing an origin to their traits and to themselves, since life had to come from somewhere just like life on Earth or the overworld comes from water. And speaking of water, this is exactly what this element is, anti-water. It's a gooey fluid that slowly grows, over millions of years in fact, into crystal pillars, forming what are called vertical lakes. It's inside these lakes where life in the end first began. This substance, called end medium, is a direct opposite of water, being so incompatible with it that it instantly boils away when it touches it. 
An end life is based on it, much like overworld life is based on water, accounting for the harm and creatures receive when touching water. This substance can also crystallize entities on contact that can then be transported and later be released by breaking its end medium shell with water, or permanently sealed and turned into statues. A property that I gave it because I found the perfect opportunity to introduce easy mode transport accounting for the aforementioned transportability design pillar, making a more vanilla friendly version of the iconic Golden Lasers. Inspired by non-Newtonian fluids, this substance is supposed to have variable viscosity, which translates into how mobs interact with it. Similar to how non-Newtonian fluids act in real life, end medium will present a greater viscosity the stronger a force is applied to it is, and more like a fluid when the force applied is weak or non-existent. If an entity is moving above a certain speed towards or over this liquid, they won't sink in it, although they will be able to do so if they approach it very slowly or stand still over it. Its other properties are intimately related with the attributes that biology in the end present. Or, in other words, the design pillars we already established. Said properties being the ability to present itself as oxidized or as pure, accounting for bipolarity, the ability to dry over entities, crystallizing them when it is in its liquid state, and to teleport entities in its gaseous state, accounting for transportability, and the ability to grow upwards thanks to this crystallization property, accounting for verticality. Not only that, but it also gives an origin to the signature purple color that most elements regarding the end have. So, if something is purple, it has to have end medium on it to some extent. With that covered, we can then jump straight into the question. What is the identity of the end? And how should we approach it when adding content to this dimension? Well, we've mostly answered this question already. The end is the anti-world, and while barren, life seems to develop just fine on it. Chorus plants cover the majority of the place, endermen live their lives peacefully and shulkers do their thing. I believe the end should be seen as a cold, sunless anti-world, where autochthonous creatures perfectly live on, since they originated in it. And medium, the equivalent of water of this world, would be found in located deposits much like glaciers can be found on Mars. And around these deposits, other biomes full of alien life would be present surrounding the area. For most of the surface of this dimension though, barren wastelands should be present with interesting geographical formations. This approach would actually be more of a combination of better end, which already does a great job on revamping the end, and Nullscapes and Ulraf's take on the topic, while considering other factors like the presence of end medium, a for a long time much needed element to give an origin to the end's biology distinctive traits and to end life as a whole, and a yet to mention design factor. I already mentioned that the end is a sunless place. And this fact makes me strongly believe that trees with leaves have no place in this dimension, which I also think rolls back very fittingly to the anti-world hypothesis. The very concept of leaves comes from the fact that in the real world plants try to use as much surface area as possible to absorb as much energy from sunlight as they can during the day, in order to do photosynthesis. Plant-like life, in the end, would generate its food by other mechanisms like chemosynthesis, by consuming end medium. This will also lead to very interesting designs for unique, alien-looking, leafless plants that I think will be more fitting for the end. Another ecological niche where content for the end could be added is below the islands. I have always imagined a forest of bioluminescent plant-like creatures called thorny roots that would hang off these islands, inflicting anyone who touches them with poisons teletransported from all corners across dimensions. But why would we visit a forest like this in the first place? Well, allow me to tell you why. When I first started designing my mod, I thought about something. A concept that would later give name to the mod, although it ultimately didn't. Netherite is what I called a dimensional alloy, a supermaterial made of the combination of a metal that can be found both in the overworld and the dimension it originates from, and a special material only found inside dimension, 
Having 3 pure metal element materials as of 1.19 in Minecraft, I thought a dimensional alloy, much like netherite is by combining ancient debris and gold, should exist for both iron and copper. So I thought that I should give the end a super material made of its own dimensional alloy. But I didn't want to make some lazy stuff and tint ancient debris purple and call it enderite or something like that. No, I wanted to make an original ore which had its own way to be found, rather than mining it at low altitudes. Endrite tubes are a mineral-like material of organic origin. The residue and excess substances that drip from the roots of corus plants can sometimes build up on top of thorny roots, crystallizing them and making, over thousands of years of deposit, these tubes made of a very hard but lightweight material. Its properties are based on the real-life material aerogel. These tubes arrange from 1 up to 7 in the same block and tend to appear in groups of clusters. The player would look for this material soon after they got their first elytras, trying to find it in a forest of roots that would harm them if they are not cautious enough. These roots usually poison you on contact, but they very rarely can inflict you with the most deadly effect you can get when flying right above the void, blindness. But thorny roots are not just there to screw you up. They also provide a support for you to place blocks once you find a deposit of endbrake tubes. These tubes could be then smelt into a very resistant fabric used to forge endbrake ingots with iron and dragon's breath, and with them a new set of tools. Note how I used iron for the craft of this dimensional alloy. Why iron and not copper? There is no metal present on the end anyways. Why would I choose iron? Well, the end has always reminded me and to many people of an asteroid field. Asteroids in real life can be rocky, icy or high in metallicity. I think it would be a cool design approach when reworking the end to treat islands like asteroids, where some islands tend to be more rocky and barren, others icy, accounting for the aforementioned end medium deposits where life would be more common to be seen around, and others have a high presence of end iron ore. But of course I could not make things easier for me and I had to design iron ore with a very special particularity, in order to be able to see an iron ore which normally looks just like regular end stone, you must have a vision similar to that of an enderman, but since that is not achievable in survival mode, night vision is a close second. This would make iron the metal of the end much like gold is the metal of the nether, and with it we would craft its corresponding dimensional alloy. But high in metallicity asteroids only explain the presence of metal in the end, not iron specifically. I chose iron as the metal of the end since it is used so much in crafting, and by the end of the game it would be nice to have a big source of it, for those players who don't particularly enjoy building iron farms. Very important thing, I think the dimensional alloys, the three of them, should be equivalent to each other and not upgrades from one another, since difficulty doesn't escalate that much in the end and power creeping is a very easy thing to do if not treated with carefulness. This means that you will have to choose between an netherite armor and an endbrite armor, since both would be made by upgrading a diamond armor on the smithing table. But then why would we want to make endbrite tools in the first place? Endbrite replaces some of the traits that netherite has for its own ones. At the time I'm making this video, I have only made an armor set and a fancy new shield, but more is to come in future versions of the mod. Endbrite armor is an armor focused on mobility, trading the knockback resistance that netherite armor gives for a plus 5% increase in movement speed for every piece of armor worn. Wearing the full set would be equivalent of having the speed 1 effect constantly on. Endbrite armor also trades the ability of netherite armor items to not burn in fire with the ability to be able to wear an elytra with it. I know, I know, very original, but this is kind of the thing an end armor would do. And no, strapping teleportation into the armor is not a vanilla friendly feature at all, and besides, we already got enderpels and chorus fruits. Bear in mind that in order to be able to equip elytras with end bright armor, you must wear the full set, otherwise your chest plate and elytra would split back into two items. Finally, we got the portal shield, a very fancy shield that would teleport enemy projectiles back at them and would be crafted with a single item of embright fibers in the upgrade bench. Projectiles with no owner or that would not harm their owner when shoot back at them would be teleported out of existence. 
There are some other features that my mod includes, like crystallization potions, which provide a completely different kind of crystallization from the one I showcased, and many things I haven't mentioned, like how crystallization works on players, or what are those chorus plants with roots I showed in the video and are so important for the existence of endred tubes. I want to give you the chance to try out the mod and find out, but I also want to let you know that the patch notes provided with the mod and the wiki of the project on its github page provide full detail to everything this mod adds, along with lore and design choices. And that covers most of it, which was my approach for the end's identity and what features would make sense to put in, along with how I would implement them. Remember that all of this is just my personal opinion on the matter and everything talked about here should be taken with an open mind. Lastly, I want to remind you that my mod, Comet, the mod showcased in this video, is available for download. And while the blocks and items presented to you here are pretty much finished, world generation isn't. And I instead made vertical lakes randomly appear on the end surface, along with chorus humus and thorny roots below the islands. The mod is still in its alpha stage, and I will be working hard on fixing bugs and compatibility issues that may arise, while working in world generation for future expansions. If you want to inform about everything regarding the development of this mod, feel free to join my Discord and don't forget to download Comet and try it out if it has woken up your curiosity. I hope you enjoyed this little video I made. I have a very tight schedule, so I am not sure when I'm going to be able to be releasing another video or coming updates for the mod. For that very reason, I highly recommend you to join my Discord where you can be more directly in touch with me. That's all. Take care.